Good morning, internets. First things first, if I look or sound sick, it's because I'm freaking sick. Um, and I'm upset about it because I have a lot to do and I don't, I don't have time to be sick. Ain't nobody got time for that. So I'm gonna try to just keep on rocking right on through. Um, so this morning I am still not in my vault. I am in a Chevy Sonic loaner car from CarMax. Um, so I thought I'd talk to you guys a little bit about what I've learned about the Chevy Sonic so far. Um, let's just go ahead and get comfortable here. Yeah, nice and roomy, um, by which I mean, no, not, not nice and roomy, not nice and roomy at all. Um, it's when Rob and I sit in this car together, like we did for the road trip for the whole eight hours home, we are shoulder to shoulder because, um, I'm a grown adult and he is a full size grown man. And, um, this car was not built for more than one adult to sit in at a time. Um, I'm pretty sure that if you're an adult, any larger than me, I'm about five foot six, um, you're going to have a hard time in this car. It's not made for tall people. It's not made for wide people. Um, it's not made for people with bad knees like myself. And, um, I question whether or not it was actually made for people. So <laughs> there's, there's those things. Here's a really cool thing. So apparently, um, Chevy has some kind of deal going, um, with, I don't know, Jixers because the I'm gonna try to show you guys the stash cluster. Okay, so if you're looking through the steering wheel, you see this dash cluster here. And um yeah, so apparently this is the Chevy um Jixer 1800. <laughs> I don't know why they use the dash cluster off of a motorcycle, but that's honestly what it looks like to me. I swear to God, Google the dash or not the dash, but the instrument cluster, um, off of a Jixer 1000 and, um, see, see if it looks to, as, as close to you as it does to me. So I've got a motorcycle dash, um, 1.8 liter motor on the inside of it, which, um, is, about the same size. I'm pretty sure it's about the same size as the generator on my Volt. Um, and it, I can't record video while the car itself is running because it shakes and rattles so much. You would think from the amount of shake in the camera that this car was making a thousand horsepower, but it's not, it's just rattling and shaking all over the place. Um, with the 138 roaring horses. Um, and it just shakes the whole damn car. Uh, in the, in the Volt, it's not a gas pedal because hitting the pedal doesn't make me use any more gasoline because it's an electric car. The Volt's an acceleration pedal. Um, in fact, it's been so long since I was in a fossil fuel burning vehicle that I actually don't know what this accelerator pedal does in here. Um, from the sound of things, I think when I step on it, it like tightens up the choke chain on the squirrels that are inside the motor just trying to make it run. It's like, yeah. That's kind of what it sounds like. Um, and if I sound like I'm not completely in love with this car, it's cause I'm definitely not. Um, and then this is a entry level, um, base model, uh, econo car. And those cars are important and it's an important market market segment. And I understand the reason for making cars like this. I understand the demographic that these cars are marketed to. Um, I think the problem is that I'm just out of my demographic here. Um, I am 30 and this car is designed for 17 to 20 year olds. So that's, that's part of the problem. Also, I have driven an entry level, super compact econo car before that was better than this. Um, my very first car was a 2004 Saturn ion, a silver one with the pocket doors. Um, so it was technically a four door, but it didn't look like a four door from the outside. Cause I had those Chevy fold in pocket doors. Um, and I, if CarMax gave me an option between this 2016 Chevy Sonic and a, my 04 Ion, I would take the Ion all day long, all day long. This thing gets a little freaky on the freeway. It accelerates just fine. Okay. It's not by any means, um, sluggish off the line. You hit the accelerator and the car takes right off. I mean, why wouldn't it? It weighs nothing. Um, but it does not handle, uh, 
today, it's much less than yesterday, but yesterday we had one of the worst windstorms in the valley that we get here. Now, if you're not familiar with Southern Nevada or the Mojave Desert, we get some incredible windstorms here where we have gusts up to 70 miles an hour. And you have to, if that's what the wind is doing when it's time for you to drive home, that's what you're driving home in. And um, so yesterday I was driving this thing home from work and just getting knocked all over on the freeway. Um, my Ion was roughly the same size as this, but it would not get knocked around on the freeway like that. You know, get a little bit of shake when the wind would hit it on the broadside. Uh, but not like this thing. This thing felt like a sail. Um, and frankly, in, you know, those wind speeds, it just, it just didn't feel safe. I felt like I was driving a roller skate. Um, the, the trunk space is okay. Um, the, the center information center, I mean, I know like in the, in the, in the dash over here where the radio and everything is supposed to go. Um, I know it's really busy in the vault and that's one of the things that I've kind of, um, you know, joked about and made fun of, but, and this thing, it's, it, it just doesn't make any sense. It, they put the, the cheapest touchscreen in it that they could half the time. The touch doesn't even work. This is a fairly new car. It only has 12,000 miles on it. Like I said, it's a 2016. Uh, I know it's a loner, so it's going to get beat on. Um, it's, um, as far as entry level cars go, if I was going to buy a car for um, my college age daughter, this would absolutely be on the list. It's completely practical. It gets great mileage. Um, it's it it's great from point to point to point to point. If you're not driving a whole freaking lot like I do, um, you know, gonna go to school, go to the store, go to this, go to go to the library, things like that. Um, it, the whole thing has a very like first year of college vibe to me. Um, it makes me feel anxious, like I should be cramming for finals right now and. I'm well past all that. <laughs> um, but I mean, it, it's good from the, from that perspective, but God, guys, I got to say after driving the Volt premium for so long and then getting into this thing, I feel like I'm being punished. Um, I really do. It's, it's just, it's just not good in here. The seats make my legs fall asleep. Um, the, the, the back of the seat, no matter which way I move it, makes my lower back hurt. And I know this just sounds like a long list of complaints and you know what it is because I am sick and I have to go to work anyway. And, um, this car's bumming me out. Um, has any, does do any of you out there drive a Chevy Sonic? Do you know what the deal is with these things? Oh, also there's no CD player in this car. So I know that CDs are now an ancient form of media and that everything has gone digital. There's, I mean, there is, um, a USB, I'll try to show you guys this. There's the glove box, but then there's also this media area. And if you can kind of see in there, there's this USB port and an auxiliary input inside of here. And that's just like a little space. It's separate. It's not the glove box. It's completely separate from the glove box, but this is like where you're supposed to plug in your iPod and stuff. And like, that's really cool. If all your media is digital, but all my media is not digital because, um, you know, I'm, I'm not 20. So I still have like books and books of CDs, um, that I had on the road trip with us in Reno, um, and don't have here or, um, like we put all the CDs in the trunk of this thing and drove it home because you couldn't, you can't play them in here at all. And that made me also feel sad and old. It's sad when you're the media that you're used to, like you outgrow that and the world moves on without you and you're stuck with all these, um, books of CDs or, you know, in my parents' case, you're stuck with, you know, your big giant cases full of, um, uh, cassette tapes. Um, and I, I, what came before cassette tapes, the gramophone. I'm not sure, but whatever it is. But now I get into this car and I especially feel out of my demographic because I have a giant book of CDs that I can't use in here. I'm like, thank you for making me feel additionally old. Like not only do the seats make me sore, but also I can't use my CDs and, um, it's, I don't know guys, what's, what's the deal with this thing? The steering wheel is pretty much identical to the one in the Volt, which is fine. Cause that's, it's a nice comfortable steering wheel. It's a good size. The buttons on it are all in the places that I would expect. Um, and that makes sense cause Chevy to Chevy, like why make more than one steering wheel if you don't have to, but it, I don't know. I don't know. It's just this thing. And I don't know how long I'm going to be stuck in this thing. I still don't have an answer from CarMax as to when they are going to be able to ship the Volt. Um, so we'll see. Um, if you guys have any stories about, um, little beaters that you've driven, if anybody has any experience in the Chevy Sonic, please share it in the comments down below. I want to know what your guys' first cars were.
My first car was an 04 Saturn Ion that I drove the absolute crap out of, and I loved that car. I loved it with every fiber of my being. I absolutely adored my Saturn Ion. I don't know. I don't care how dorky that sounds. I loved that car. I want to know what your guys' first cars were, because this one's reminding me of my first car. It's making me miss my first car, because I feel that the 04 Ion was a better car than this here 2016 Chevy Sonic. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Um, I think it's, it's, it's been a journey. It's hard to have an electric car vlog when I'm forced to not drive my electric car. Um, but I, I want to know how's everybody doing today? What were your first cars? Like, what's the goal? Like, what was your first car? And what's your favorite car? Um, what was your first car? What's your favorite car? And what's your least favorite car? I want to know. So car guys get on there. Let me know how everybody's doing. Um, I'll keep posting updates as this whole thing unfolds. I'm Catherine with EVs of Nevada. I hope everybody's having a great day.